my weight problem. 22 pounds. I am broomstick. Wooden numb. I sweep through extra credit hours. My emotions are dustbin. I make them small by pushing them in corners. My body strains on rugby pitch. I watch midnight from library closing shifts. I forget food. I lean into cracks of sidewalk on the way to get, on the way to my next obligation. Four walls of women's center witness the no refuge of, you look great, Karen, like you've lost weight. I feel like shit. My tongue weakens from explaining the fucked up of that phrase as if it were compliment, as if it were carrot-shaped reward. In breakup, in breakdown, my appetite forgets itself as I try to forget myself. The depressions of my life are charted by the number of times I've heard, you look great, did you lose weight? 30 pounds. We are not little diminutive ladies in this family. We're not little old ladies, we're big old women. We are large and we are not ladylike, my grandmother says, cackling. 41 pounds. My mother has ulcers. It's hard for her to swallow and she has pain when she eats. Teams of specialists, experts, national institutes of health try to figure out why she has so many symptoms but no disease, no diagnosis. The answer isn't cancer. This is worse than cancer. At least cancer has protocols, my mom says, and as a cancer survivor, she knows. She's dropping weight at high velocity. My first visit confirms bird bones, and I take back every preteen hatred and fear of varicose veins or fattening thighs. 16 pounds. A marathon runner on our track team collapses. We envy her for the distances she spanned, the largest mileage from plate to mouth. Her straight A's would not match the accomplishment of eating a whole sandwich. 18 pounds. I am coming out, bursting from my shell, being a big dyke. I am what early feminists and athletic departments everywhere fear. I love punk bands. I love hard, fast sounds, loud. I am grunge. I wear combat boots and flannel. I shave my head. I dye my hair colors. I am beautiful. I am more myself. All those magazines lied. They spoke bones and celery and sickness. Ten years old. Bubble butt. No matter how scrawny I was, I always had one. Leslie. This should have been Leslie, but kids get it wrong sometimes. Frog face. I had big blue eyes to grow into. Frankenstein. Unfortunate incident with cutting my own bangs straight across. 27 pounds. I swim from couch to couch in a language secondary to me. My ex-partner's mother palms me cash. I siphon off with wheels of cheese, tomatoes, fresh bread rolls, and Turkish pizza. For a living, I check coats at bars and wash dishes. I am simultaneously experiencing the euphoria of freedom and free fall of homelessness, isolated, surviving. This shifts me more than any other experience. I am made strong by resisting suicide by thoughts of my parents and a man walking his dog. Being ruthless is scarcity and opposites. I am having the time of my life. I have never been more heartbroken. I love it. 218 pounds. I am heavy with the weight of losing my mother to an undiagnosed wasting illness. It reifies my associations with thinning as unhealthy or, or coming from sick cultural pressures and neglected mental health. I have a fear of weight loss as others fear weight gain. I have also feared weight gain, but not in the same way. Periodically, I have associated thickness and sturdiness with strength and power. This is the difference from feeling fat and out of breath, and I seek balance. If I remember my grandmother's comment about being a big old woman, it gives me three goals. The first is to be bigger than my skin and effective in connecting with others. The second is to be old, that age is a gift of more life when life is not a guarantee. To be old is an 
accomplishment. The third goal is to be a big woman, is to know how to heal myself, make the next right decision to keep moving and shedding the weights of exterior expectations to fulfill my own balance. 